Our quest to figure out what young people want has brought us to New York City, to the offices of Elite Daily. It's probably the biggest website you haven't heard of, although it might be all over your social feed. They call themselves the voice of Generation Y. What the hell does that mean? Let's find out. First, I want to say congratulations on the massive week. On the month currently, so far, we're already at 40 million uniques. That's David Arabov. He's the 24-year-old CEO of Elite Daily. Um, first one I have is Old Baby Body Shaming. Then I have Lord and the whole Taylor Swift and Kim K thing, Fifty Shades of Grey, and Al-Qaeda and ISIS joining forces. Quite the range of stories. What are we pitching today? So I'm doing this article, Why We're Never Breaking Up Anymore, and I feel like with texting, the normal way to break up with someone is just not respond. And like, that's not acceptable. So who are millennials and what do they want? You know, they're people just like you and I, and what they want is, you know, content that they can read and they don't feel like, hey, you know, I just read this 3,000 word article and I have no idea what it meant and now I don't, I feel like an idiot. They want content that's speaking with them rather to them. They want content that, you know, has transparency and authenticity and has some sort of voice behind it rather than just the way things have been done for such a long time. How, how can we make this issue palatable to millennials? Judging from the 60 million unique views they say they get a month, Elite Daily is on to something. We do want to be the voice of Generation Y. We want to be driving the conversation offline and having our content live within conversations amongst people. That's really the key driver of success for us. And you know that's what we're constantly striving to do is shaping and driving culture and talking about culture. I mean, this Kim Kardashian trend is kind of still going. I don't think that it's going to stop. Nice. Um, so maybe it's something there uh, from the bigger scheme of things where we can kind of tie in race and all these other things inst instead of just focusing on the picture because I feel like that's what everybody is doing. That's def definitely a go. Do you see yourself as a, as a journalism platform or more of sort of a destination for viral, pop culture, sort of trendy things? It's a combination of both. You know, we, we do things on the more serious side and we talk about the more serious type of topics um, that would be more journalism heavy. The government is spying on us via planes. They can pinpoint where you are within about 10 feet. I personally don't really care because I feel like I have nothing to hide. And on the other side, you know, it's the trendy pop culture entertainment, but that's what the people love. That's what the people love. So as of 12 p.m. today, the number one article on your website that was trending was Girl Literally Shits Her Pants While Twerking in White Leggings yeah. with like 165,000 shares, 175,000. Just an observation. Feel free to comment on it. There isn't much comment. It's the internet. You know, I, I can't force people to share something or, or, you know, share it with their friends. Two weeks ago, the number one article on our site was uh, Nine Reasons Why You Shouldn't Freak Out About Ebola, and that one had 600,000 shares. So what do you think that says about our generation, though, when the top trending article is, you know, the girl twerking and Kim Kardashian? I mean, does that kind of worry you about the future of our society or generation? Not necessarily, because people want to consume things that are fun. People want to consume things that are driving conversation. You know, Kim Kardashian, you sat at any dinner table over the course of the last two days, Kim Kardashian was the first topic that came up, uh, you know, and if it wasn't that, it would just be people saying, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And that's it. Do we really have nothing else to talk about? But how much of it is what you think they should care about and the type of news and world stories out there that you think our generation should be following? I mean, and I think that's the biggest mistake that people can make is try to think for other people uh, because you can't. All right, so Elite Daily may not be thinking for other people, but they've definitely figured out something about what young people want to click on. Viral stuff, relationship advice, kind of fits into the whole Generation Me label we get. What about critics who look at your website and say, you guys are actually perpetuating a lot of the stereotypes, the negative stereotypes about millennials being narcissistic, being kind of jerks and self-entitled. What do you think about that? Two things. First, we do a lot of aspirational and inspirational content, so where we you know, tell people, hey, get up, get up off your ass and go do something out there. And on the other side, I mean, they can say whatever they want to say. I don't really care. Case in point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They're not lazy, but they sure do seem demanding. The media just loves to bash us millennials, but maybe they should chill a bit with the stereotypes. I'll tell you why.